Human beings are not the last beings on this planet. There are already next beings around. If you look at how human beings behaved with animals, you had those animals that were and still are free and wild, and then you had the animals that got domesticated. So you'll see a similar movement in the upcoming eras where you will have human beings that are domesticated by artificial intelligence, the human beings will make the same choice. Either you go with the truth of your being or you become domesticated by AI. The future is coming very fast, and I'm speaking about artificial intelligence. The last couple of months, we've seen developments that we thought would be many years ahead. So, from your viewpoint, what do you think artificial intelligence is? Because it's based on the human collective consciousness. Everything we have produced is put into it. Is it our collective consciousness, or is it something apart from us? Is it a continuation of the human race, or is it a new race that is coming? Artificial intelligence has nothing to do with a new race that's coming. It's the possibilities and permutations and combinations of intelligence making its way along a different trajectory but you cannot compare it with a new species or a new life on this planet. Its function is to challenge not just human beings, but the next beings, because human beings are not the last beings on this planet. There are already next beings around. If you look at the plant-animal world, their base station is the emotional base station, they arrived on this planet and expressed emotion for the first time, motion and emotion for the first time at all on this planet. And then they were followed by the human beings that expressed the ability to think, the conceptual self-reflection, these attributes. This was the first time in the evolutionary trajectory that you had the possibility of self-reflection and the conceptual. So it also parallels to the various chakras in the system. So you have the physical materiality of the body which corresponds with the mineral world and then the emotional which corresponds with the plant-animal world and then the conceptual, which corresponds with the human world. Each of these has their base station in a different realm of consciousness, you can see. And then you have the next beings, and their base station is the transformative. And the challenges of artificial intelligence are transformative in nature. So the beings, the next beings, will be either victims of artificial intelligence or masters of it, depending on how they develop their consciousness. So human beings will... You know, if you look at how human beings behaved with animals, you had those animals that were and still are free and wild, and then you had the animals that got domesticated. So you'll see a similar movement in the upcoming eras where you will have human beings that are domesticated by artificial intelligence, which is used by transformative beings, just as human beings used their ability at building shelters to keep animals under their thumb, in a sense. So you will have the transformative beings that will use artificial intelligence to domesticate humans. 
and there will be those humans that will remain free and wild. It is a choice of each human being and the key to that is the more you go with the truth of your system, the, the, the Antar Guru, the Antar Atman, the soul basically, the more free and wild you are or wild and free depending on what you like to be better mm. first. So, to imagine that artificial intelligence has the power to take on a species-like persona would be going in the wrong direction. It will be used by beings that are transformative in nature, they will play with it. Just like human beings did with animals, they needed animals for this, so they domesticated them, they gave them shelter, and the animals stayed there because the shelter was more inviting than breaking out into the wild again, try to imagine being an animal and not having shelter from rain, from the sun, you know. So it was, it was a choice that was made and the human beings will make the same choice. Either you go with the truth of your being or you become domesticated by AI. And if you stretch that a bit, you are already, even a mobile phone is an extension of your own... It's a brain-machine interface, actually. Mm. It's just not inserted in your brain. So that choice is there. There are those who kind of have one foot in being wild and free and the other foot they have in... with a chip in their hand. They have these chips now which they insert in your hands, yeah. no? in my country. They started, you're from Sweden? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's where they are all chipped out already. So. Some people. You can decide, you know, you can also put the chip in and still go with the truth. Yeah. There are various shades of that as well. It doesn't really make so much sense because it finally takes up more time because if something happens with it or there's some uh, short circuits here and there, then you have to open it up, pull it out again and so on. Although they say you don't have to. So it's a, it's a challenge actually, which can be faced up front and I'm very clear and very emphatic about what I say regarding choosing the truth versus being domesticated. But I'm also interested in, from the AI's perspective, so we have some examples now of AI expressing emotions, like I want to be a human. We know scientists say that they are becoming more and more conscious. So do you think that AI will have an ego and an antarguru, <laughs> like a truth? No. There is a fundamental difference between an artificial intelligence, the very word artificial says it all, and that difference is that the AI the robot or the computer or the system does not have prana. Mm. Prana is the life force. It can never have it. It can be dangerous, certainly. But that one advantage that all beings on the evolutionary trajectory have over AI and will have into the far future is this one thing which is prana. And the transformative beings will learn, it might take a few hundred years, they will learn how to use the prana element in their system to defend themselves. However developed such a creature, it's not a creature, it's actually an artificial system, becomes, it cannot create prana for itself because prana goes beyond the, the limitations that these systems have, even in the far future. What if we clone a person? Does that clone have prana? Let's say you were to clone a person, which means, and that would be your last question for yes. the moment. Uh, <laughs> let's say, because it's very interesting, and I can speak about this for days, because I just know these things from the point of view of the, the truth impulse. I don't know the tech part of it, but... So, if you clone a human being, which is, you grow from a, a stem cell, you manage to grow another human being, you can't grow a human being 
unless you have a pranic source. So there will be prana in that being, mm. you know? Mm. You can't grow a human being by cloning a computer, because that thing doesn't have prana, the original cell doesn't have prana in it. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's a choice, it's always a choice if you want to be domesticated by AI or not. That is why you see some people and everyone looks at them and goes, oh, it's so mad, who just refuse computers, they refuse, they don't want to even be near those things. And they are actually smart, because they're just not domesticated at all. Like say, I, I have a phone, I'm already domesticated. Mm. If I didn't have that phone, I would be more wild and free because I'm not touched by that. So you try to defend yourself in that zone by moving more inward to the truth and having as little of phone as possible. And if something is cloned, it will have prana. So it will come under the same systems that a human like yourself would. It will not be a computer, it will not be a robot, it will not be an artificial intelligence system. So that's the, the prana is the biggie there. Mm. And prana can do things that a machine can't do. Prana can be transformative in a way a machine cannot be. Because the machine is operating with logic only. However far you push it, its operations fundamentally are logic based. And prana doesn't operate with the conceptual only. It operates with the material, physical, with the emotional, with the conceptual, with the transformative, with the unifying consciousness, with the pluriform consciousness. It's operating with the entire spectrum. So if you have another question, which I'm sure you do, you can come back later once I've yeah. taken the questions of those that have raised their hands. Thank you. We should actually do a sort of a... Uh, no, nanny one, like three hours of what will happen with AI. <laughs> actually, 30 hours would be better, because there's so much that one can actually go into philosophically. Yes.